Apa? Welcome back to the London School of English. Uh, in today's live stream, we will be talking about some of the TV series that you can watch uh, uh, to improve uh, your English from beginner to advanced level. Uh, we hope uh, that will be a fun and exciting way for you uh, to get inspired. Uh, and uh, here with us today, we have two of my wonderful colleagues, uh, our expert English language trainer, uh, Emma Palmieri, who teaches Hello. general business English to our international clients. Hi, Emma. Hi. And, and we also have Faiza Afsal from our sales team, who has wealth of personal experience living and working in many different countries and cultures around the world, uh, including several English speaking countries. And uh, uh, both uh, Faiza and Emma will share with you their favorites and give into cultural tips as well. Uh, we will have um, our main uh, content of the live stream uh, would be led uh, by Emma. And then uh, all of us uh, will join you uh, at the Q&A session uh, at the end of the live stream. Uh, and uh, before uh, we get to the main content, uh, I would like to mention that this live stream uh, is brought to you by the London School of English, uh, where you can uh, learn English both in our face-to-face -face classes in London and uh, virtual groups online. So uh, be sure to check our website at uh, londonschool.com, uh, which, uh, we will show just now on the screen. So uh, without further ado, uh, welcome everyone. We can see uh, lots of people joining us. Uh, hello everyone. And uh, hello. we've got Frank Kunz, one of our uh, alumni who always joins us uh, for live streams. Fantastic to uh, see you. Uh, we also have uh, Ultimus, good evening. And uh, we've got uh, one of our uh, Follows Ali Abdi uh, from Somalia, and uh, we've got Somalia. yeah, and uh, so do uh, share with us uh, from which country in the world you're joining us today, because uh, I uh, I can see that there are quite quite a few of you uh, joining. So uh, without further ado, uh, over to Emma. Okay, so hello everyone. I hope you're all well and keeping safe. Um, I know at this time it's difficult sometimes you don't get to see the people you want to see you can't do the things you really want to do but one thing you can do is watch tv and <laughs> a lot of people are at the moment it's a fantastic way to improve your english you can do it alone you can do it with your friends you can do it with your family and there's a whole wealth of different kinds of programs you can enjoy and they can help you in different ways how do you choose 10 shows? I was asking myself that for a long time. There are so many things to see. In the end, it comes down to what I like, okay? So what I prefer, and I've tried to mix it up a bit. So we've got some British programs, some American programs, some quite serious programs, some quite fun programs. Subjective. It's what I've chosen. It's what I like. My number one piece of advice to you, find something that you enjoy. Some things I love, might not be for you. That's absolutely fine. Um, people have different tastes. So my number one thing is don't try to push yourself. Oh, I must watch this. No, if you enjoy it, you'll learn more. Okay, so try to find something you enjoy, perhaps experiment with different things. And then when you find something you love, go for it. Okay, now another question I'm frequently asked is subtitles. Okay, should you use subtitles or not? Okay, number one, I would say in English. <laughs> Watch in English, okay? So if you do use subtitles, don't do them in your own language. I think that's just a bit too confusing. Um, I would say that if you want to practice primarily your listening skills, as in how good you are at understanding what's going on, it's better not to use subtitles. Because if you use subtitles, you're reading, reading the language. Um, so if you want to focus on your listening, don't use subtitles. However, they are still very useful. I mean, I'm using them now when I'm trying to learn Portuguese. By you know, reading them, you can learn the vocabulary. You see the vocabulary, you're much more likely to remember it. Okay, And of course, it helps you to follow what's going on. So I would say for vocabulary, for general language acquisition, subtitles are the way to go. 
if you want to focus on purely only your listening skills, try without subtitles. Or, of course, you could do both. Maybe the first time, try with subtitles, second time, without, or vice versa. Okay, so find again a way that works for you. If you don't enjoy watching a program with no subtitles, it's too difficult, then watch with subtitles, okay? It's better to enjoy it, do it regularly, okay, and find the best way for you. Okay, now let's begin. What is in our top 10? Okay, we're going to begin um, with the lower levels. So maybe if you're new to English, if, you, if you're not so confident in your listening skills, okay, these are shows which might help you at the beginning part of your language journey. And I'm going to start with a classic, a British sitcom classic, and one of my husband's favourites, Only Fools and Horses, okay? This show is from the 80s. It's quite old, but oh my God, people still love it and they quote it today. It follows a South London family, two brothers and their uncle. Here's them, Dell in the middle with the fur coat, with the hat, with the necklace. You can see he's a bit of a player. He quite fancies himself. His younger brother, Rodney, and then his uncle. They are together trying to become rich. They're quite a poor family and they're trying to make their money, sometimes in ways which aren't entirely legal, <laughs> but at heart, they're good people. And um, it's a very, very funny program. Still now, even though it's quite old, people still love it. And it's got lots of physical humor. So for, if your English is not so developed, it's relatively easy to follow, okay? So here we've got lined up for you a little clip, a very famous clip, where Del Boy, the guy that's a bit of a player, is trying to impress the ladies in his local pub. Let's see if he succeeds. See, nowadays, these modern Euro birds, they go for the more mature men who've made it in life. Yeah? Is that why we're having no luck? <laughs> no, no, no. I haven't started yet. Just building myself up to it. Yeah, well, you better hurry up and be closing time soon. All right, all right. <laughs> I think we're on a winner here, Tree. All right, play it nice and cool, son. Nice and cool, you know what I mean? <laughs> gets me all the time I find it hilarious okay so you can learn also quite a lot about British culture from this show okay it's set in London you can learn a bit about London uh, culture working class culture in particular there's a lot about the class system which is a big thing we're going to see in other shows as well about British culture and it particularly makes fun of people who think they're more important than other people and yeah it's it's a really interesting and I think a really funny show He's also got some catchphrases that even now people use. There's this one phrase called lovely jubbly, which was invented by this show. It wasn't used before, and Del Boy uses to say, oh, it's really good. It's lovely jubbly. Like, so, you know, everything's great. And it's so famous that now it's in the Oxford Dictionary. So it's a phrase that was invented by the show and is now classical, standard English in the Oxford Dictionary. Okay, let's move on to maybe across the Atlantic to the United States. And another show which is really popular and I think quite good for lower levels is Malcolm in the Middle. You might know this already, but it's quite um, a well-known show. Um, it focuses on, surprise, surprise, Malcolm, <laughs> who is the middle child in quite a dysfunctional family. So it's... Um, quite good because it's talking about everyday family life. So if you're looking for expressions, phrases that you can use just to request things, ask for things, complain about things, this show is full of those kind of phrases. And it's quite uh, uh, good in that it makes fun of like sort of different family dynamics. So how different members of the family relate to each other. For example, Malcolm's older brother is always trying to take advantage of him, take things away from him. But Malcolm is a bit of a child genius and he knows this. So there's this very funny scene. I think Olga, you're gonna show us some pictures from here 
where we see Malcolm making a sandwich. And first of all, it starts off fairly normal, just putting jam on a sandwich. But then he puts relish on, which is usually for savoury things. And then he scrapes some dirt off the fridge and puts it on the bread. You think it's so strange. Then his shoe. And you're thinking, what the hell is happening? What is he doing? And then he sits down on the sofa and he starts to eat his sandwich. And guess what happens? His older brother, as always, swoops in and grabs a piece of toast off him and starts to eat it. Only then does he realise what's happened, <laughs> that he's put all these disgusting things on the bread in the full knowledge that his brother will steal it and take it from him. So, yeah, it, it's quite funny talking about that. So, you know, maybe typical, but in a more funny way, like family dynamics. Another show which focuses on family dynamics in America, probably the most famous of them all, is The Simpsons, okay? Now, I chose this one because I imagine in your country, you already have The Simpsons, probably dubbed into your language. This could also be true of other shows like Friends, which are also great for this kind of thing. Now, if you're not so confident about watching a show in English, it's really great if you're already familiar with it in your own language then you already know who the characters are. You always, you know, you already know what the typical situations are. And so that will make it a lot easier for you to understand in English. Okay, and again, because it's a family, everyday scenes, it's got some quite useful language in there. And The Simpsons is so famous, not only has it got the normal everyday English, it's also like Only Fools and Horses, has invented some new phrases. So I'm going to test you now in English and see if you can tell me what characters have these catchphrases from The Simpsons, okay? So we're going to play a little game and see how much you know already. Okay, so let's start with a quite sort of straightforward one, okay? So, who says dough when something goes wrong, usually? So, oh, dough. Any ideas? Any ideas? You can put it in the comments box and we can see. Well done. Yes, it is Homer Simpson, Bart's dad. Okay, that's a very easy one. Okay, let's do something more difficult. Okay. Well done, Andrea. Okay, uh, so what cheerful character, when he agrees with somebody, says Oakley Doakley? So go Oakley Doakley. He's a very positive character. You see, any ideas? They make a lot of fun of this character. I feel a bit sorry for him sometimes. Any ideas? It's a bit harder, this one. It's the Simpsons neighbor, Ned Flanders. Ned Flanders. Remember this? <laughs> I feel a bit sorry for him. He doesn't do very well. And finally, okay, what character, not a very nice character, this one, when he wants to get rid of somebody, they want them to go away, he doesn't just say goodbye, he says, release the hounds. Hounds is another word for dogs, by the way. Release the hounds. Any idea? Any idea? It's this one? Yes, you're right. You've got the right idea. It's Mr. Burns. Mr. Burns, okay? <laughs> Looking very evil in that picture there, okay? Oh, and I've forgotten, the most famous catchphrase of all, one of Bart's. Does anybody know Bart's um, catchphrase regarding an item of his clothing, maybe? Any idea? So when he's running away and they say, Bart, come back here, and he goes, ah, oh. duh, duh, duh. Any ideas? No, it's eat my shorts. I don't know if you know that one, but eat my shorts. Okay, and all of these phrases, I don't know if they've quite made it to the Oxford Dictionary, but they are definitely, you know, people know who they're referring to, okay? So you can use them as a bit of a joke in English. So it's become such a cultural part of our lives that you're quoting it in everyday language. Okay, so now we have to move on to mid-levels, intermediate. So if you are at the stage, you feel you know the basics, in English, well done, you're making progress. But you want to push yourself a little bit more. Maybe you want to broaden your range of language so you know the everyday phrases from Simpsons and Malcolm in the Middle. You know how to ask for things, but you want more specialized language. 
you want to take it to the next slightly higher level. Okay, and of course, watch more great TV. Well, I've selected some things which I think really um, show you to different aspects of maybe British culture. Maybe you know these shows already. The first one is Downton Abbey. Okay, I chose this one. It's won a lot of awards. It's very popular both in the UK and in the United States. Um, it's got an amazing cast and really award-winning writing. It's set in a big country house that you can visit when you come to the UK, actually. It's very interesting. And it's set about 100 years ago, but it follows um, uh, about 30 years, I think. Um, and it shows this aristocratic family and their servants adapting to a changing world. So it shows a period of time from about the turn of the century, about in the 1900s, until, well, 1920s, 1930s, so all the way through the First World War. So there's a lot of social change, and it shows how that impacts on the aristocratic family and their servants and everybody that works for them um, around it. Now, the older generation are used to like sort of, you know, being the lords and ladies of the manor, are finding it quite hard to adapt to this changing world. And I've chosen this tiny little clip from this program, a really famous scene, where it shows that the older generation in particular are finding new concepts like jobs, having to have a job, quite difficult to understand and to process. Let's have a look. What will you do with your time? I've got a job in Ripon. I said I'll start tomorrow. A job? You do know I mean to involve you in the running of the estate. Oh, don't worry. There are plenty of hours in the day. And, of course, I'll have the weekend. What, what is a weekend? <laughs> the classic scene from Maggie Smith, who's an amazing British actress, just shows you if you don't work, then what is a weekend? You know, all the days are the same if you don't work. And the idea of having a job is quite shocking for them. So, yes, <laughs> it's a very entertaining show, and it shows you a real insight into what life was like in the past. Another show I really like, and it's on at the moment, is called The Great British Bake Off. Now, this is something a bit different. It's not a, a drama. It is a reality TV show. In fact, a competition, a baking competition, as you can see from that beautiful picture of a cake. OK, um, 12 people from all different walks of life, not professionals, just ordinary people, come together in this massive tent in the countryside and to make cakes, biscuits, and bread. And every week they do, do a different thing. So one week it's cake, next week it's biscuits, next week it's bread. And every week the best one wins Star Baker and the worst one has to leave the tent. So in the end, there's obviously three, the winners. Um, it's a really heartwarming show. So some people watch it because they love baking. But other people just watch it because it just makes you feel good. It's a competition, but they all support each other. They come from every walk of life, as you can see. So they come from every different, so some of them are twenties, there are some of them are grandmothers, some of them might live in inner city estates, some of them live in the countryside, some come from the north, some come from the south. It's a real mix of different people from different kinds of backgrounds. And they just support each other and they're incredibly positive and helpful. And it just makes you feel the world is a better place. And maybe we need that right now. The judges, sorry, we just saw that very briefly there. Yes, the judges are also really lovely people. And um, the two on the right are comedians, uh, very famous comedians, you might recognize them. And the two on the left are the judges, um, Prue Leaf, who is an amazing cook, and she has many, um, uh, she's got a cookery school, and she's quite uh, famous in the, in the cooking world. And Paul Hollywood, who is a baker, he specializes in bread. I said, they're like your dream grandparents. And Pruley is always fabulously dressed, as you can see from there. She's always very colourfully dressed. So it just leaves you with a smile. And also, you can learn some fabulous recipes for baking. So I, I highly recommend it. OK, and the next one is Midsummer Murders. OK, we are famous in UK for our detective series. From Sherlock Holmes, which has been made into a, a recent modern drama today, to Agatha Christie, which has been through so many incarnations over the years, um, we have countless murder mysteries on our TV screens. However, sometimes they can be difficult to follow, especially if your English is not so good. Um, Midsummer Murders is 
a classic, as you can see here, is set in a beautiful English village where everybody tends to live slightly stereotypical uh, English lives. They have village fates, they have perfect gardens, they're always making cups of tea. Um, it looks wonderful, but don't be deceived. This place has the highest murder rate in the world. It's worse than downtown New York, okay? It's become a bit of a joke that in this village, which surely only a maximum of 500 people live in, about, I don't know, 70 murders have happened. <laughs> so it's, it's ridiculous. They have so many murders in such a tiny, tiny place. Um, but it is hugely, hugely popular. It is our most exported show. So more countries have Midsummer Murders than any other British TV programme. So you've probably also seen it in your own language, okay? But watch it in the best language of all, and the most original one for this programme, English, okay? Let's have a look at, see what they say. No, wait up. <laughs> Never seen anything like that. He's so serious. He always was. You want to lighten up, son. Come on, leave that. The man is dead. One of you is lying, and I'm going to find out who. You are too old for a midlife crisis. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> so you see, it, it, for a motor pro, it's quite fun, okay? They don't take themselves too seriously, which is a very important quality for British people, not to take yourself too seriously. And this program doesn't. It's a bit... Of, bit light it's not too serious now for something a bit different okay so if you're not so much into the drama you want something more factual some people prefer that um i've chosen blue planet 2 now there are so many documentaries to choose from i think our strongest area is nature documentaries in the uk um they have hugely improved the quality of their photography um, and you can see some really beautiful and things which have never been seen before on television. Um, this one um, is has won lots of awards and um, it was on a few years ago. It was very, very popular Sunday night viewing in the UK. And in particular, it had a huge impact on people using plastics, this show. I don't know if um, you've had a similar um, movement in your own countries, but um, we, it, we became aware that we were using lots of plastics only once, what we call single-use plastics, things like plastic bags, plastic straws, and they were polluting the ocean. And they showed part of this on this show, and it led to um, a huge change in people's attitude to using plastics. It was all over social media. Um, as you can see here, 88% of people who saw Blue Planet 2 changed their lifestyle, okay? So it had a huge impact, and on that obviously influenced shops and businesses. And even in Parliament, um, the politicians talked about um, changing new laws to make it um, more, uh, to, to encourage more plastic recycling and to discourage plastic use. You can see here a beautiful photograph, which is typical of the kind of photography that's used in the show. It's presented by a guy called David Attenborough, who's um, very famous, and he has become um, a national treasure. He's been making nature documentaries for over 60 years and um, is greatly admired in the UK. And we love him. He's like our, our grandpa. He's like our national grandpa. Um, he joined Twitter a few months ago, actually a few weeks ago, I think, and he got one million followers in the fastest time ever. <laughs> so that became quite funny because we didn't expect to see him on Twitter. And when he joined, everybody was like, oh, my God, you're on it. I want to be your friend. I want to follow you. So, yes, that was, that was uh, lovely. So, yes, very influential person. I recommend any show that he's in, watch it. It's amazing. Okay, now we come to the advanced levels, okay? So for those of you who are more confident in your English, you maybe watch lots of shows already in English. You can deal with more abstract content. You don't have to see it on screen. You can understand the language much better. Um, complex storylines, and maybe you're more interested in the cultural elements rather than just purely um, the, the fictional story itself. You're interested in what you can learn culturally as well as linguistically. 
Okay, so the first one I've chosen is a bit of light-hearted fun. Okay, so not too serious, light-hearted. It's called First Dates. It's a reality TV show. I'm not massively into reality TV, but I like this because it's so positive, a bit like Bake Off. You feel so much better having watched it. It's presented by a French guy called Fred, and it's set in a restaurant, which is very posh, very, very nice. And the show pairs up couples who have never met before and then films them having a, their first date in a restaurant, okay? So they're under quite a lot of pressure. I don't know if I'd want to do this myself, but okay. But generally, everybody is really nice, okay? And because they're meeting for the first time and having that maybe slightly awkward first-time conversation, you have all these expressions and the kind of topics that English people talk about when they meet somebody for the first time. So it's a re really useful like model for the kind of conversation that you might have with an English person when you're meeting them socially for some reason. Not necessarily a date situation, <laughs> could be, but it could just be any sort of social situation. It could be a business meeting, could be um, a friend of a friend, who knows, okay? So let's have a quick look at what kind of thing you might see on the show. People who have a passion in something. Like, I love photography. I'd love someone who likes that to be fair, someone who's quite artistic. Hello, hello, how are you? I'm Caroline, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Hey. Okay, so they talk about who they want to meet and then you see them meeting them and then they give feedback at the end. The what? The worst part, the most stressful part is right at the end and they get asked, do you want another date with this person? And then they look at each other and they have to say, yes, yes I would, or no, I don't think so. And of course they hope the other person's going to say the same thing. But yeah, it's a sweet program. Another program, which showcases the classic British social awkwardness, <laughs> which unfortunately is a big part of our culture again, is an amazing award-winning show again, Fleabag. You might have heard about this. It won some Emmys um, a couple of years ago. It features um, this lady, Phoebe Waller-Bridges. She is the writer as well as the a leading actress in this program. And it's a brilliant portrayal of a modern woman's life in all its messiness. So she has some disastrous relationships, not only with um, guys, but also with her sister, her, you see, with her parents and, and other people around. But I think it's quite typical of uh, modern life and definitely modern life in London. She is not a necessarily nice person, but we can sympathise with her. And she has a unique way of talking directly to the camera, which gets her which gets us on her side, okay? And she speaks her thoughts straight to camera. Um, you saw Fleabag, you see, <laughs> you know it, okay? Great, I'm glad you loved it. So um, I think it's a show, it's only got two series, so it's quite short. And so many people have said they weren't, they didn't know whether to see it or not. They sat down to watch the first episode and they saw all of it in one day. So it's quite addictive. <laughs> so give it a go and see if you find it addictive. Okay, now for something, our last thing, number 10. If you're looking for something a bit longer, a bit more complicated, you can't have failed to notice the phenomenon which is Game of Thrones. <laughs> so I'm gonna mention this. Okay, so it's a series of novels, maybe you've read them, maybe you would like to read them, um, by George R. R. Martin, and it is now finished officially, although some people want them to make a different ending. Um, if you don't know it, um, the show interweaves the lives of families competing to win the Iron Throne of the Kingdom, okay? It's very loosely based on British history, <laughs> the medieval, very loosely. Uh, the English War of the Roses um, in the 1300s, um, but there are actually no dragons in British medieval history. Sorry about that, I can't change that. Um, but it is very entertaining. There is quite a lot of sexual scenes and there's quite a lot of violence, almost as bad as Midsummer Murders. <laughs> Maybe not quite as bad as that. But it is very witty and its writing and its characterization has have won it many, many loyal fans. Okay. And there are phrases that now, again, like winter is coming. It's definitely coming now, but winter is coming, but repeated all the way through, or you know nothing, Jon Snow, again, is things that people refer to now. Um, it's quite witty, and I think it's good, quite um, 
good sort of political points to make sometimes. So take this scene, we can't show you the video, but maybe um, we can see some pictures and I can explain what's happening. So in this picture, photo towards the beginning, this character, it's like a politician, is explaining to the queen um, that information is power. So he's trying to like show how powerful he is to the queen. But this is a dangerous thing to do if you know this lady at all, Cersei. And she looks at him and goes, you know nothing. So she says, really? That's interesting. And then she tells her guards who are standing around him, like sort of sees him. So they all grab him like that. And then she says, no, don't seize him. And then turn around. And then at the end, she turns back to this politician and she says, mm -hmm. information is not power. Power is power. <laughs> so I think, you know, that's... Uh, uh, very uh, witty and interesting take on on uh, politics. You might not agree with it, but it also gives you an insight into her character, which is not necessarily, again, a nice one. Okay, so that is my top 10 um, TV programmes. Please put your own recommendations here. As I said at the beginning, there's, I can't say that this is going to be the top 10 for absolutely everybody. These are my personal top 10. But if you have a show that you love, that you think is really good to learn English, put it in the comments box, share it with others. That will be great. My last point is going to be that you can use these shows not only for improving your listening skills or using the subtitles to expand your, um, your awareness and knowledge of um, vocabulary, but you can also use it to improve your other skills. So if you need to improve your writing, maybe if you want to you know, work towards an exam or something, I think it's very good practice to try to summarize what you've seen happening in the program. This is also very useful if you want to practice your tense work. So let's do, because lots of it's in the past. So he did this. So she said, turn around to the guards, and then they turned around and da, 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 da. So it's quite a good way to test how much vocabulary you have and your tenses. Um, another way, if you want to practice your speaking skills, because I know that's something that can be difficult to do when you're not in the UK, is to start a film club or a TV series club with your friends. So you watch uh, an episode every week and then you get together online or face to face with your friends and discuss what you saw, see what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. So again, you're in English. <laughs> so you're not only watching it in English, but also you're practicing your English to discuss with other friends about the TV series. Okay. Then another way, if you want to practice your reading skills, read reviews. Um, there's a couple of suggestions I've got here of different review websites, Rotten Tomatoes, um, IMDb, Empire Online. There are so many of them that you can uh, use to read for reviews of the programs. So you can also decide what you want to see, um, see if the show is really for you or not. And of course, then as well, you're practicing your English in the reading form. Okay, so I think that brings me to the end, and it is indeed six o'clock. Thank you, Emma. Uh, we've learned so much about uh, both those TV series and the uh, day-to-day life in the UK, and uh, uh, that, that's been quite inspiring to uh, to have uh, a look at this list. Uh, and uh, Our clients we... also have some excellent recommendations. There are some yeah. very good shows on there. <laughs> Fantastic. And we've got uh, some uh, really nice comments uh, from our viewers who also share different uh, different uh, favorite uh, TV shows. Uh, for example, Sherlock, Gra Graham Norton, uh, oh, yeah. Park, uh, and then uh, we've got we've got This Is Us and Picky um, Blinders. Uh, yeah, T the Crown is also very good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Luther, Sherlock. Yeah, so yeah. oh, many out there. So many out there. I would say Sherlock, the modern Sherlock, is super difficult. <laughs> it's great, but I, sometimes I find it hard. He speaks so quickly. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. but yeah, it's a great series to watch. Definitely. Mm. Frank has just dropped a classic, uh, Mr. Bean. That is oh, also an excellent oh, one. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. good for new levels, definitely, Mr. Bean. And yeah. uh, also, uh, Frank yeah. gave us a translation uh, for the uh, Great British uh, Bake Off as well. 
le meilleur pâtisseur in French. So just uh, just before we move to a few questions, um, we also had some comments from um, from our viewers who uh, told us that um, they really struggle uh, uh, when it comes to listening and to sometimes only understand just a few words. I think uh, one of the viewers, Ultimus, um, mentioned that earlier. So Emma and Faiza, just briefly, what would be your uh, advice in this case? So one thing I would um, say is it helps if you're not around English speaking um, often that like if you can train your ear to hear the sounds and perhaps make them more familiar. Um, I know this is not the case with uh, Netflix or Amazon, but if you are, for example, watching something on YouTube, you can adjust the playback speed so that somebody speaks a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. um, I think when we first started these live streams, some people requested my playback speed <laughs> to be slower because I can talk quite quickly. So um, I think that can help, I guess, until you, you find yourself um, perhaps becoming more familiar with the language. Absolutely. I think also like to think about what kind of things you want to watch and why. So um, sometimes just I just say just use subtitles in English, like so see if that helps you. Um, other times, I maybe like sort of nature documentaries, I find this quite helpful, where you're just mainly watching the pictures, so you can enjoy it, just in sort of visual element, and then almost just keep a note of just the words that you recognise, just to begin with. So you might not understand the whole sentence, but you pick out words here and there. And that can do, as um, Pfizer has already said, like tr help to train your ear to like sort of, okay, first of all, I could only understand three words, but now I can understand five words and that will slowly build up. But I would say the key is try to find something which you don't find too difficult or stressful, mm -hmm. <laughs> that you can quite enjoy on some level because it can be very demotivating if it's really boring and really, really hard or too long. So that's why lots of things like The Simpsons or Friends, like somebody else recommended Friends, um, is quite good because it's quite short. So yeah. like, if you, you know, only watch 10 minutes of it, but regularly, that will help you, but you need to find something you enjoy enough to stay with it. I, I guess I would also say sometimes the content. So if I'm not mistaken, the clip that we were watching that was difficult to understand had humor. Mm -hmm. So if, if you don't understand the humor, that could also be why. Mm -hmm. So like Emma said, if you're watching a documentary, which is more factual, or say you're watching a, a detective show or a family drama or a legal show where it's less about understanding like the humor or the nuance of the language, then maybe start with those because some things can become quite complicated because you're trying to also understand how the humor is uh, being presented. Mm. Yeah. So I guess, uh, I guess watching this TV series uh, can actually almost prepare people uh, who are, uh, who are thinking of uh, coming uh, to work and study here in the UK uh, to not only understand uh, English better, but also to understand their environment. Uh, but uh, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, so um, Emma mentioned one of her favorite shows was The Great British Bake Off. And uh, that, for example, can help you if you're going to a restaurant and you need to figure out what you're planning to order because suddenly you recognize that, ah, that's this pie, or that's this speciality, or that's this mm -hmm. dessert. Um, and then also when you're watching shows that are set in certain cultures, you'll, you'll hear slang of like, oh, I'm taking the tube to go here, or I'm just going to Boots to buy this. And you're like, okay, Boots means it's a pharmacy. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas if you're watching an American show, you might be going to CVS and they're like, what is that? Yeah. Um, or if you're in Canada, you might be going to shoppers. And so um, it can sometimes help you to, to um, find out about like uh, cultural references. Um, and uh, again, I think also make small talk when you, when you arrive. Um, mm -hmm. You can say that, oh, I saw this show and this was this place and what do you know about it? Or you can even go visit them yourself, so. 
Yeah, I mean, like even things like, sort of, for example, first dates, because that's set in a restaurant. That's quite good for if you go to restaurants in London and they say something like, oh, cheers, meaning thank you. <laughs> Not only drinks, cheers, but also thank you. Or at the end of the meal, they might say, oh, it's on me, meaning I will pay. So, you know, lots of those kind of very idiomatic, everyday English sayings that often aren't taught formally, mm -hmm. um, they come up in those kind of shows. So I think that can be quite a good way to pick up that kind of language. Yeah. And uh, when it comes to uh, English training, because we offer different courses, including general English, business English, etc. So uh, could you tell us how, for example, underst uh, understanding of some intercultural uh, aspects and also understanding of uh, humor uh, is, uh, is a part of this, uh, uh, of the training? Um, yeah, I think um, it's it's very practical. So I think there's like, two levels. I think we, we learn a sort of uh, the practical level of when you go to a pub, what sort of things do you say, what kind of things might happen. So it's sort of very sort of everyday level. Um, but we also, um, disc often it's discussed in class, like things like um, the culture of, uh, I don't know, who pays for things, you know, or how do you show politeness? in this culture you know is it okay to hold the door open for a lady do people expect that still is that okay or not you know like the things like that i think are um very common discussion topics and you have some very lively conversations to compare obviously what's happening in the uk um to what's happening in other cultures and what they think is you know acceptable so i think that's uh you know it's a really um it's a really interesting example of um sharing information and finding out about each other's culture which i find very enjoyable i'd um also add that uh, i've recently found i think netflix has a lot of really great international programming um and diverse programming as well so um i know i'm late because this was at the height the beginning of quarantine but i recently finished watching a show called never have i ever mm -hmm. and it's about an indian girl in uh, california and that was a very interesting show. My my background's from Bangladesh, so we're from the subcontinent and culturally we can be quite similar, but it was interesting to see on a TV show sort of the practices that they follow, whether it's in their religion or, you know, the fact that, you know, for some cultures, relationships are not necessarily something you do in your teenage years, but you're supposed to wait until you're older. Concepts like arranged marriages, concepts like aunties, that everybody you know is somebody you know and that they might ask you certain questions or those sorts of things. So it's it's an interesting way to learn about a culture be, in mm -hmm. terms of how it's represented. Um, but similarly, there are some great American shows um, that look at other cultures. So Fresh Off the Boat looks at an Asian family. Um, there are so many that are, are kind of Latino families as well. So you can you can kind of learn and understand some of those things if they're presented in that show. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would also say, you know, it, with our general English course, we, we look at film and TV as a topic, for example, mm -hmm. for discussion and to learn vocabulary and things. Um, with our business course, uh, you can use that in networking or small talk because you might find yourself at an event and you're not really sure how to approach somebody about something and you obviously want to, have a safe topic that you can talk about. So TV and film is is quite simple rather than politics or religion or anything like that. Yeah. So uh, it can certainly help if you're like, so have you seen The Great British Bake Off? What was your favorite? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, great for social programs and uh, networking drinks uh, that also happen uh, yeah. in our school. Um, so, uh, we need to wrap up, uh, but uh, hopefully we'll come back to the topic of uh, learning uh, English uh, by watching films and TV series uh, again sometime in the future. Uh, there's just one uh, more question uh, from our viewers uh, that I would like to take. Um, uh, it's, um, it's a question from Ultimus, mm -hmm. who's asking us uh, whether it's worth uh, re-watching um, each and every uh, single passage, uh, possibly with subtitles, um, to make sure that uh, there's a good understanding and uh, of vocabulary um, and uh, of the content. 
Uh, um, Emma, what do you think? Um, I would say that, coming back to my um, earlier point about subtitles, if your aim is to improve your listening, then no, because it's unlikely you're going to get somebody to repeat the same point <laughs> over and over again until you get it. You're going to be practicing your, what you say, your global comprehension. So overall, what do you understand? What do you take from it? If, however, your purpose is to focus on maybe the grammatical element of English or maybe a particular pronunciation feature, or you want to catch a particular word, then go for it. I would say don't don't do it very often for a whole film or TV series because it will take forever and it will be very challenging. But you know, it might be a good way if you want to focus on pronunciation or a particular uh, feature of the language, then then that could help. So it depends on what you want to do. If you want to focus on something very uh, very precise very small, like a particular pronunciation thing. Or if you want to improve your listening overall, just try to understand what you can. I think you need to accept, even if you're at quite an advanced stage, maybe even me, when I watch a show, if somebody says, what happened in every stage? Or what did he say at that point? I don't actually know. <laughs> I can't actually remember. <laughs> so just like you said, you're focusing on the story, you know, what what happened? Well, you know, he was obviously angry and he said something. I don't know what he said, but he said something. So don't focus too much on the detail. Focus on what you understand overall. Perfect. Uh, I really like this uh, global understanding versus versus a specific aspect of uh, of language, and I guess that's part uh, part and parcel of what we do. Uh, 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 Absolutely. During, during our classes. Mm -hmm. So uh, one last question uh, to Faiza. Yeah. Uh, could you tell us uh, very briefly what kind of classes and courses uh, can our viewers uh, take with us and uh, uh, what they need to do if they want to book uh, their training? Yeah, of course. Um, so at the moment we have courses available face-to-face -face at our center in London. Um, we have different group courses on general English, on business and professional English. Uh, we also run specialized content uh, such as legal English courses and English for HR, um, IELTS exam preparation as well. Uh, so if you are able uh, to travel to London, you're, you're welcome to join those courses. Or if you are based in London, you can also join them too. Um, you can visit londonschool.com, which Olga's put there, um, for more information about the different course types. And you can also contact us at uh, clients at londonschool.com if you have any questions. Otherwise, uh, if you are uh, not planning to travel anytime soon, which we also understand, uh, we have our virtual courses. Um, similarly, we've got group courses on business, uh, general English, IELTS exam preparation. Um, we do a lot of one-to-one -one training as well. So if you want to specialize on something you need to focus on, uh, we can cover language around that. Uh, we have voice and accent training as well, if you're interested in that. Um, so lots of options, I think, if you want to study from home or if you want to come join us uh, here in London. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. And uh, I want to say a huge thank you uh, to, uh, first of all, to Emma and to Pfizer for joining us and for sharing all, all of the tips and uh, advice and uh, lots of great ideas. Uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, lots of uh, people will uh, come away uh, with a list of uh, different things to watch and we'll start watching them <laughs> very uh, soon. And uh, of course, a huge thank you to all of our viewers and uh, our alumni who are joining us on a regular basis. Uh, and um, mm, we hope uh, that uh, this was very helpful. Thank you for sharing your time with us and uh, uh, do subscribe to uh, basically uh, just to see all of the other uh, live streams uh, that are coming up. We've got several uh, on the different topics related to business English. Uh, so uh, we hope uh, to see you very soon. And meanwhile, uh, we hope that uh, you keep safe and well and uh, keep learning English. Absolutely. Um, yes. Thank you, yeah. everyone. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.